Hello everyone. Today let us see how we can cluster the MNIST data using k-means clustering. What is k-means clustering? K-means is a popular clustering algorithm which is used in machine learning and data mining. It is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm which means that it does not need label data for training. Instead, it partitions a set of data into k clusters based on their features or attributes. Let us understand how a k-means algorithm works. Let's take an example of your data points. Now, we have to set the value of k and here let us assume that the value of k is 2 which means in the final result we will have two clusters. So, for that now we have to initialize and uh, for that we have to choose a k initial cluster centroids randomly. For example, let's consider this as c1 and this is C2. These are two initial cent centroids that we are using and based on this for some radius we have to assign all the data points into these clusters and based on this uh, clusters like the data points we have to find the new centroid and update the new centroid. Let's consider the new centroid here as this point. And and we have to repeat this process until we no longer see any change uh, in the clusters or this centroid significantly or until some specified number of iterations here the algorithm aims to minimize the within cluster variance which means it tries to make the data points within each cluster as similar to each other as possible while also keeping the clusters as different from each other as possible and k-means is a widely used in various applications such as the customer segmentation, image compression, document clustering, and also anomaly detection. Now, using this algorithm, let us apply this on our MNIST dataset. First, let us understand what this MNIST dataset is. This MNIST dataset is a set of numbers that are written by uh, postal codes and uh, these are the handwritten numbers and using that we have to identify which today which digit is what before going there we also have to understand that the crucial part here is setting the value of k we can uh, set the value of k uh, using several methods a uh, few of which are like if you already have the domain knowledge based on that we can set the value of k for example here we know that we are classifying the digits so the digits can be from 0 to 9 and hence the k value here is 10 similarly we can also use a cross validation method or uh, there is one uh, famously known method called as elbow method which uh, which is used to find the k value uh, to be used in the k-means clustering now before jumping into the implementation of k-means let us understand the elbow method The elbow method is a technique used to determine the optimal number of clusters in a dataset 
for clustering algorithms like k-means and it works by plotting the within cluster sum of squares against the number of clusters and identifying the point where the rate of decrease in WCSS slows down. So, uh, here, uh, let's say example that here it's the values of K and this WCSS and the elbow matter will be like M. So, at some point you can find the elbow. At some point you can find the elbow point and this will be the optimal k value that we are looking for. That we are looking for. So how we can do this is we have to choose a range of k values and start by selecting a range of uh, possible values of number of clusters and this should be based on the domain knowledge that we have or it can be our intuition about the data set and then run the k means for all the k values and then for each k value we have to uh, calculate the within cluster sum of squares and when we plot this we can find the optimal k value but here we have to uh, remember an important thing is that elbow method uh, provides a heuristic for selecting the optimal number of clusters and it may not always yield a proper elbow so we have to be careful especially when using large data and complex data sets and in case if the elbow method is not determining a clear k value we can also use like other methods and also few times if we run multiple runs and use different initializations we may lead to a robust like we can ensure the robustness in the choice of k since we already know that the k like the final cluster we want here at 10 let us go with this value and now let's see the implementation uh, I've imported all the required packages and here we can see that the data set uh, is found in the tensorflow library and uh, we can import from there after importing the data set I've also reshaped the training data set then I visualize the images. This is how the images look. These are the MS data set like digits images and uh, based on the each picture we have to classify into what digit the, uh, does that fall into. Before doing all these I have performed the dimensionality reduction here. Uh, we'll see about the dimensionality reduction in the future and here we have initialized the k number of centroids and then assign the clusters based on the centroids and then updating the centroids and this is basically the k-means implementation and here I have defined the maximum iterations as 100 and here uh, the match cluster label is to check if the uh, cluster that we have uh, the data point that we have classified is uh, classified correctly or not like does that uh, fall into the cluster that it is uh, indeed mentioned in here i have uh, taken the value of k as 10 and uh, i am like found the like predicted the data like how that's working and for that the accuracy is like around 77.9 there are few ways to increase the accuracy we can try doing that in the future and if uh, i've also mapped the clusters and this is how the clusters look this is like all these colors indicate uh, the cluster of each digit and the cross mark here is about uh, is its centroid Thank you.